So we've just reached the fall for September and we've ended the transfer window, yet I have sold Jaros to Hamburg. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh no, did the board sell another one of your players? This time, I was the one who sold him. Why did I sell Jaros? Because of the fact he kept on being upset. He'd been upset for the entirety of last season and he has a temperamental personality and he's also extremely inconsistent. I offered him out and I thought, okay, I'll see what I can get bid wise. Then I got a bid from Hamburg that I couldn't turn down, not only because it was such a good deal, but it also broke a record from a Polish point of view of the biggest ever sale a Polish club has ever made. That's how good this deal was. And when I say how good the deal was, we made 20 million pounds for this guy. And I was thinking of sending him anyway. And you look at the ratings he's had over the years. He's not been that good. For what I'm hoping he would be like for a championship winning side, a Champions League winning side. He was never that great. He was very inconsistent over the years. And I had times had to drop him because he was either unsure or he just didn't care. And... As far as I'm concerned, that's reason enough to sell him. And if you look at what he's done for Hamburg since he signed for him in the second tier of German football, I think I made the right call to sell him. Now, whether or not I can get any money back from the steal from selling him, I don't know. But Jaros is no longer with us. He's in Germany now. And quite frankly, good riddance to the guy. He was an absolute pain in the backside. That being said, I want to talk about other players that we have sold over the years, and Mirat Sariki's already moved on to Hoffenheim. So, yeah, he's already moved to the, another team in the Bundesliga. He's actually doing quite well for himself, but he only moved for 8 million, so we didn't get much money from the guy, which is a bit of a shame, but turns out that his lack of game time for Borussia Dortmund was enough for him to want to move, so he moved. And, yeah, I didn't play him for the first time. I just dumped him the second team and then sent him back. Turns out... That can damage a player's career, but he's at Hoffenheim now playing every game so far in the Bundesliga to my knowledge. And yeah, he started one game, covers the best twice for Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga. He's winning. Dortmund have got two points in their first few matches. Ha 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 but yeah, Hoffenheim, a great place for Sariki to get some game time and to develop as a player. So hopefully he'll get better and better and we can make more money from him in the future as well because we keep on getting possessed of the next sales anyway because we developed him. It's fun. I love that. And hopefully he becomes a really good player in this division. And hopefully he becomes a really good player in this division. Kasper Jehetsky is still here and yeah, he is... Not playing at all for Dortmund's first team. He's playing for their second team. Quite frankly, I am not upset with what is happening to him because he was also complaining a lot because I wasn't letting him move to him. So, yeah, I am very spiteful if I want to be, if I want my players or full players to suffer. Korsak has yet to play for Arsenal right now and I don't think he's going to get a move. He was actually listed for loan but nobody came in for him so apparently he might be on too much money but we sold him for 9 million. Hopefully we get some that money back because I'd like to actually get some money back for this guy. I think he's got great potential. Matthias Suluk is playing for Frankfurt now and I don't think he's playing for the first team. I could be wrong. He played once last year the first team after moving the 10.5 million but i don't think he's played at all this year apart from the cup so has he made another bad move for his career i hope not because i actually like this guy he never complained to me about wanting to move i'm just sad that it's actually the case that he's moved on and we couldn't really use him as much as i wanted to but now we're talking about maris dobrowski and yes he's on loan to slavia prague it's his third loan spell and he's only got one year after his contract I don't know if he's going to sign a new deal. I hope he does, because I want to make a profit from this guy, but he's played six times for Poland. He's on loan to Slavia Prague, who are a playable league, and he's played every game so far, so maybe he can win a trophy with them. I hope that is the case, for his sake. Now, what have we been doing since we last met in competitions? 
Well, we've had quite a few games since we last met, and we lost in the Super Cup to Lecce Pasta by three goals to nil. In fact, if I recall correctly, and it should tell me here now, Jaros played in this game. I, it was this game I decided he was not worthy of my time anymore. Kowalski also got sent off in the 19th minute of the game, so yeah, it's not great for that point of view. But then we won in the Europa League, and we won 7-0. And I thought, okay, that's a good result. Then we took on Lecce Poznan in the league and beat them by a goal to nil. So either something happened in the Super Cup that they all got very complacent from it. Or we were just really bad because it was also at their ground. No idea why we won that game but we couldn't win the Super Cup. But at least we're winning games I suppose. We won the next leg of the Europa League and we were then were going to go to Switzerland. So I'm thinking, yes, here we are. We win our next game in the league against Wisdom Krakow. So again, really good result. But then we took on Zamax and we drew Nuno in the first leg away from home. I generally thought this would be a winnable game. We then beat Rakoff by two goals to nil before we took on Zemek and lost 2 1. And I got to show you the times of this goals because it's ridiculous. We took the lead in the 62nd minute of the game and then we considered the equaliser in the 93rd minute and then the winner in the 96th minute. I've never suffered this kind of defeat before. But the fact I've now suffered it. And it was also from two players coming off the bench for them. Absolutely threw me off. And I was not prepared to lose a game such as this. So now we're dumped into the Europa Conference League. And I will be honest, I'm not actually that upset by this. Because it means I get to try and win a competition I've never won before. And a competition I would love to win in a football manager one day. So, is that a blessing in disguise? But after we came back from that surprise defeat, which I still can't believe actually happened, we are back and we win the next league game to win our fourth league game in a row. We then get a team from Denmark in the Europa Commerce League and we beat them 4-0 at their ground. So I'm thinking, okay, we've done well. We then win against Katowice to win our fifth league game in a row. And then we win the home fixture against our Danish opponents in the Europa Commerce League to make it to the league phase for the very first time. We then win the last league game against was a block by a goal to nil. And I've just got to show you this first and foremost because it's actually remarkable. The first time in the save, we have won six games in a row to begin our season. And I can't quite believe it. So this is our best ever start to a league campaign. Michel Noak, despite being upset, which I haven't told you about, has got five clean sheets so far. So despite the fact that Michel Noak has got five clean sheets, he's actually upset right now. He's wanted by Andalet Lecce, Lecce Bosnan, and has had a bid fun slask, which I've turned down because I didn't think I want to let one of my best goalkeepers I've ever had go to a divisional rival. Can you blame me? But yes, he's a bit upset by it, but he's still got five clean sheets so far in the league and eight clean sheets in nine matches. And 8 clean sheets in 13 matches so far. Yes, we've had 13 matches already this season. We've been busy. But his record of having only considered 27 goals in 34 matches shows just how good a performer he is in goal. He's been the missing piece I've been looking for for the last couple of years. And I'm happy we finally have him. A great goalkeeper can make all the difference in the world. We've only considered once this season and that was against Britt Beck who I, I can't believe that's the team of all teams to do it. They're in the relegation zone, but we've won a few games so far. So as far as I'm concerned, this has been a successful season so far. But what of the Europa Coffers League league phase matches? Well, despite everything, we actually have been given a rather nice position in this competition, 22nd place. So I thought to myself, okay, we could do well. Also, the team that knocked us out of the Europa League got knocked out of the Europa League themselves. So I'm looking at that thinking... Revenge? Revenge, maybe. Can I get revenge on them? That'd be good. I, I've only just noticed that in this competition. I really want revenge now. But yes, in our six games, because for some reason we get less games in this competition than we do the other two, we have been given Leon, I guess, a team from Turkey, uh, Jen Claire Berigli, I, I believe. Timo Misk, Rapid Vienne, who knocked us out of the Europa League. So that's another team we want revenge on. And Tiazzo. So, an interesting lineup for oppositions for the Europa Conference League. And I think we can actually win a lot of those games and get into the top eight. Leon might be the only one I'm really concerned about. 
But everyone else, apart from maybe Rather Bien, who knocked us out last time in we were in Europe, I think we can beat pretty much all those opponents. So I'm really hopeful we could do a good job here. Also, despite selling Jaros, we only have dropped down to 50 to 1. I think we were 33 to 1 at one point, but given one of our first six matches in the league, I'm really hopeful we can do a good job here. And again, win a title. We haven't won it for a couple of years now. We did win the cup last year, which I want to defend. But can I win the cup and league double? And can I actually win the Europa Conference League this time? That, for me, is also a major goal of mine that I want to do. For me, winning trophies left, right and centre is always the most important thing. And while we can't complete the challenge by winning the Champions League this year, we can at least win the Europa Conference League this year, right? I have a lot of faith we could do it. That being said, I'm looking at the season summary this year and I genuinely want to see what all the teams are in the European competitions this year and where they've managed to get to in their competition. So we're going to look at Lege Warsaw. Did you make it into the Champions League group stage or did you not? No, you're not for the third qualifying round by Dima Kiev, but you are in the Europa League. So congratulations to Lege Warsaw. They have done something good there. Hooray. Let's see, Parson, they're not also in this competition. So we've got two teams in the Europa League from Poland, which I guess is good, but at the same time, not so good. We know that Let's see, got knocked out, but oh my days, they got knocked out by that team? How did you get knocked out by Jeneszczyska of all teams? I think I think beat this team once, right? The Slovakian champions of all teams beat them. That is, I mean, I know it's a loaded league, but I just wasn't expecting that to be the case. Unbelievable, really. So, did. Lechia get through. They have. They've actually got into this competition. So Lechia are in this competition, which is great. I just hope that the last Polish team are still in Europe. Are Rizlo Krakow in this competition? Rizlo Krakow are out, but they got Hoffenheim. So quite frankly, I cannot blame them for losing that match. It's Hoffenheim, for goodness sake. Can you blame them for losing that? Did Hoffenheim actually survive? I've got to check this out. Hoffenheim, they are the Conference League. So... That could be a team that we might struggle against if we end up going against them at one point. I want to avoid them, but there's some good teams in the Conference League still. I'm hoping we can do well against them. Liam, for example, we need to do really well to get any points out of them. And coefficient so far, we're still in 13th as things stand, but by the end of the season, as things stand, we could gain a position on the Czech Republic and only go up to 12th. The main goal at this point would be to go up and up and up and to hopefully... One day, get into the top six. We're a long way off that right now. But hey, you never know. It might happen. We're just about 20 odd points behind. Yeah, that's not going to happen for a while, is it? But still, as we look at the pile of money we have in our position and the transfer budget that I'm not allowed to use, I am looking at this and thinking, well, what can we do for the upcoming seasons? What are we expected to do this year? What I'm going to do, though, is end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And that you're subscribed to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.